Hey everybody, it is me Steve and I am going to take you on a small journey of how to classify a substance using mineralogical techniques. I am going to assume, I have my suspicions at what this is, but I am going to test it in ways that we would test a mineral in order to identify something like this. And I'm not going to explain what it is right now. Uh, I'll get into that very shortly. But some of the tests I'm going to run, I am going to do a Mohs hardness test. I am going to do a density test. I was going to put this in dilute hydrochloric acid. I have muriatic acid in the basement. I was going to do about a 7% solution. But I'm really confident that that has no carbon in it, so I'm going to skip that. I am also going to do a, a streak test if I can find my unfinished porcelain slabs I used to have in order to do that. I have looked at this in handlens already, uh, so I already know the grain size. I already know the basic structure of this. This is metallic, whatever this is. Basic crystal structure. I do not see anything like striations in it or a definite cleavage in any of the grains. I'm going to leave that part out and just get that out of the way right away. And there might be a couple more tests too. I'm not quite sure yet. Everybody knows I don't like to identify rocks from pictures or from, uh, po you know, that they're polished, but this one's cool. This thing's actually pretty heavy. I've actually already ran one test on it, the density test. It'll be in with the video. But this was given to me, and it's decently heavy. It actually weighs 285.1 grams. But you look at it, it's definitely metallic. All right. Now... You see this part here, uh, meteorites can kind of be like that. This this isn't a meteorite. I'm 99% sure of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's likely man-made. If you look closely at the crystals, I'm going to put them under hand lens, which is one of the ways I identify minerals. But if you start to look at this closely, you'll see like it can't be a meteorite. Me metallic meteorites tend to have very long, spindly interlocking crystals if you will so it's not that it's probably some sort of slag or or waste from some sort of metal refining um, likely steel that's my suspicion but like I said you gotta look at it under hand lens too and this is my 10x 10 magnification hand lens and you can see there are metallic crystals but they're extremely small probably on the order of medium grain size on the Wentworth scale it, uh, for sand. I, mean, I know it's out of sand, but that's about the size, and it's definitely crystal. And there's some coarser crystals in here, but when you look at it closely, most of these crystals are very angular. Not only are they very angular, but they're pretty much cubic. So I'm going to show you, take you step by step through the process of how we can identify something like this even though this is likely man-made by using standard mineral testing techniques. This is for acid, which like I said, I'm not gonna use. This is a magnet, just stuck it to the nail. We're going to use this for hardness. The kit came with a penny, but this needs to be a copper penny, so it has to be a pre-1982 penny, which the kit did not come with, so I had to get one, because it needs to be copper comes with a streak plate and a piece of glass. All right, now we are going to do our Mohs hardness test on our mineral. First, I just want to show you the Mohs hardness scale. This is just Wikipedia. It's a, it's a, it goes through number one through 10. Here are the minerals that define the hardness. Uh, their chemical formula and their absolute hardness. Uh, that's a different scale, so we're not going to concern ourselves with that. And here's pictures of them. So here's my uh, comparison uh, for the most hardness scale. We can't get exact numbers doing this, but we can tell relative. And yes, the softest, I'm going to use this. Here's copper coin, nail glass plate. And I'm going to check yes or no, because if, if any of these things scratch what I'm calling a mineral. All right. So we could do the fingernail right now. So, let's see here. Here we go. Take my fingernail. 
right across it. No, it doesn't really scratch it. See, it's gone. My fingernail got a little scratched. Let's try the copper coin. Not seeing any. So fingernail, no. Copper coin, no. Now we do the nail. I don't know if you can see it there, but when I scratched it, see how some stuff flecked off? That's what you got to look for. And it's got to be flecking from the actual instrument. And as you can see, there is a, well, I don't know if you can really see it, but the nail did scratch it pretty good. It's about, it's right over here. Probably can't see it very well. So our nail is yes. Now, we don't need to take it to the glass plate, but I'm going to show you anyway. See, our mineral does not scratch the glass. All right. So, our hardness on the most scale is around five, around the midpoint. Uh, obviously, it's going to be, it's less than six, but all we can say is that for sure is that it is greater than three, but less than six. And I'm going to compute the average for that and just see about a round, roundabout figure for that. So I calculated the average two different ways. This is one way to do it, kind of a longer way. This is the short way to do it. I'm only using two numbers. So it's about four and a half, but we know the nail did take a slight bit of hard scratching to get it to do it. So I'm going to just say it's 4.5 to 5.5 in hardness. All right, let's do the next test. Now we're going to do our magnetic test. Uh, first, I'm going to see if the nail sticks to it, because that means this itself is magnetic. And then I'm going to put the magnet to it and see if the magnet sticks to it. Nail? No. This thing is not magnetic. At all. Alright? So, no. And we take our magnet. This thing isn't magnetic at all. I can already tell you from the density, it's not a solid piece of iron. Density is way too low. So, that doesn't work. So, we have no. Alright, so now we're going to do our streak test. Basically, you just take it, run it across, press hard. We get a streak. It's a dark it's kind of just a dark gray streak, not very metallic in and of itself. Now that's really common with metallic minerals, so I wasn't expecting it to really be diagnostic, but I can rule some stuff out, like hematite, because it's not reddish, brown. So the streak color is kind of a dull medium gray. Okay, before we can get to a place where we actually start trying to figure out what this is and place it into some knowns, we need to sum up what we've done so far. There's nine points here, and this is what I know by observing and running these simple mineral tests. I know through the hand lens that the crystals are isometric looking, they could be pseudo-isometric, that the grain size is medium to coarse within the sand range, Wentworth scale. It has a very, it has a crystalline structure. Color is light to medium gray with a dark gray spot. There's that gray spot there, which looks a lot like actually the gray on the rest of it, which could just be weathering or some sort of carbon coating. Um, luster is metallic. Well, I didn't go over luster, but if you look at this in the light, kind of see how it just reflects the light pretty good. So it has a metallic luster. And this is going to be a density test. Now, what I need to do 
<laughs> I want to get as accurate as possible, so I need a milliliter graded or graded uh, or graduated cylinder here. But the problem is, uh, we bought these and they said it was two inch diameter. It is clearly a one inch diameter. So how am I going to do that with this? Well, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to need at least 200 milliliters. This is the only one I have. So I'm going to have to fill this up twice to 100. I'm going to dump the water in here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this in here. And where it comes up, the water, I'm going to draw a line. All right, then I'm going to remove the rock. Fill the water up to the line and then pour it back in here bit by bit and that'll give me the milliliters that I need of displacement. Here's 200 milliliters of water. I've used this to measure it and I put it in here. Always measure from the bottom of the meniscus so there's 200. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in. Hopefully I won't splash and get a bunch of water outside. And hopefully it won't break the jar. I don't think it did. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line from the bottom of the meniscus here, wherever it stops. Wherever it stops shaking. Okay. And take a couple of lines, actually, because I'm going to have to remove the rock, and then fill the water up to this line. Okay, so there's my new line. Now what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the rock out because it can't be in here when I try to pour it back in the... Ah. Come on you. Actually what I can do is I, if push comes to shove I can dump it because I have my line. See, because now that the rock is in there it's displaced the water and I've marked it so I can always just refill it. That's what I'm going to have to do because I cannot get my fingers around it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fill this up the best I can to get to that line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the water into here to get my actual number so I can get my displacement and then I can figure out the density. And then what I've done, so I guess explained, I have filled the water up to here. You can see it's as close as I can get to the meniscus. I know I'm going to have margin of error here, but it should only be a couple milliliters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, as carefully as I can, since this is round, it doesn't have a lip, so I'm going to pour this into here. All right. First we have 86. 86 milliliters. Dump it. I don't want to get it over 100 because then I won't be able to read it. Um, here we have 82 milliliters. Try to get out as much of the water as I can. And now we are at about, there's some bubbles in there. There we go, 77 milliliters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add these up. Okay, so I have 254 milliliters. I started out with 200 milliliters. Now I will do the actual math because remember when you do this the great thing about doing this density this way is one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter so I just need to switch units that's a great thing about doing this in the metric system so I think that's gonna be it for now I'll show you the math when I actually do it and we'll see how dense this thing is okay so before I can do this calculation I'm gonna put this here the T is tear so we're at zero I'll put the rock up top and we have 285.1 grams and this thing is heavy and dense so how are we going to do the calculation well that's how many milliliters of this uh, that I had so in order to get my actual displacement in milliliters or my actual volume because density is mass over volume I just subtract 
245 minus 200, and I get 45. Now, grams, 285.1 grams divided by 45 milliliters. As you can see, I crossed out the milliliters and put centimeters cubed. Why did I do that? Because one milliliter is equal to one uh, cubic centimeter. So there's my 45 milliliters is equal to 45 cubic centimeters. So run the math and we get 6.335 repeating grams per centimeter cubed. So this thing's pretty dense. It's over twice, but less than three times as dense as quartz. So I gotta look it up and see what metals are close to that density. Density, I've already gone over. There's the range, there's my calculation to decimal places. Mohs hardness, already went over. It's not magnetic. Streak is a dull medium gray, we've gone over that. And there are no obvious uh, cleavage or, fr or fractures visible on the actual individual grains themselves under hand lens. All right, so now we can try to f put this into some sort of known category. Now, just important to remember that this was just handed to me. I was not given a location where it was found or under what conditions or anything, I can tell you for sure this is not native to Northwest Indiana or Northeastern Illinois. So it was probably, my guess is railroad ballast, which is fine. But um, anyway, it's just one of the working ideas I have. But let's start comparing now. Really quick, something I forgot. A tenth test, odor, none. I smelled this, it does not smell irony, it does not smell like uh, sulfur or anything like that. It really has no odor to it. So I just put odor, none, because like I said, I, I know there's this is not iron and likely doesn't have very much iron in it, if any. Uh, oh, wow, I'm just having a massive brain fart right now.